All right, guys, welcome back to the Ply Inventory second video here. And today we're basically just going to be going over the canvas setup. And this is going to include the inventory, the slots, and general information that we're going to be displaying in the inventory. And as well, we're going to be going over the vendor inventory, the tooltip, and the uh, load and save. And this is all part of the canvas. So hopefully we can get through it relatively quick. Excuse me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to run the demo and basically show you guys exactly what's going on here in this second video. So let me check out what maximized. Okay, we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a whirl here. All right. Okay, so let me hop in here and clear these window errors so we're all fresh. Okay, now basically this sample menu here is creating a new game. And like I said, when I go into the canvas, I'll show you guys all the logic that goes into these buttons here. But for now, I'm just going to, you know, give you a brief description. So this is going to create a new game, and I'm only working off slot zero for whatever profile that you're using. So right now, I've named a profile, um, and I'm using just the first slot that comes with it. And that's for both new game, saving, and loading. We're only dealing with one slot here. It can be extended for multiple slots. That's all on you guys. You can do that. There's Leslie has, a, I think, a nice little series on how to handle profiles and things like that. If you guys need help, let me know. I can walk you through it. Um, but my load save is straightforward. It just uses slots and a profile. So, um, I'll, like I said, I'll get into that when we go there. But right now, we're just going to create a new game. And when we create a new game, we get a nice little loading menu. So. Um, this might have been too fast, but basically what this does is it'll load all the way down from this um, stalactite, stalagmite, I don't know <laughs> what the proper word is for it. But yeah, basically it's, it'll, it'll show a nice little cool loading indicator. It'll come all the way down. It's uh, it'll Basically you're loading the level asynchronously, and it'll it's basically through a value of 0 to 1. So this is a image that we have here. That's from a value of zero to one, which is what image fill amounts are. And we're basically telling the asynchronous, asynchronous load to project its current progress to this image component's fill amount. And that's basically how we do uh, loading indicators. And now after this is reached 100%, we then enable this nice little button down here that lets us continue with the progression and move on to the scene that we have called. So we click this. And now we're in our world. It's not very beautiful, but we have these nice little models to make up for it. So just as we start, we're going to press I, right? And that can be round, rebound to any key. So we press I, and we have our inventory. Now, as you can see here, you can hover over slots. They have a, a cool little hover effect. Um, we're right now showing our current attributes that are attached to our player, which is just a value of one in each. Our weight is 0 out of 75, and our current gold is 1,500. We also get the name of our player, along with his current level and his current class. And if you guys remember the previous video, we had set up a two local string variables on our player, one called class and one called name, I believe is what I named them. So name would be here, and this would be class, and this right here just gets the level of that player and then this is just a string that we've kind of added on uh, to it it's just string and then a space and then the level and then another empty string space with the class so i'll show you guys all the blocks for that when we get in, into all that but yeah that's basically it here so we can press escape or we can press i to get out of it so we'll just click the alternate key obviously we can't press escape to get back into it so we have to press i to hop back in so here we went over to some items. So we have a nice assortment. Um, these are obviously all basic primitives. If you have props and you have the models for your items, feel free to fill all these in with all that. Uh, Leslie has given us a few different uh, weapon models here that we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of. Um, but yeah, these are just cubes. So obviously if you guys have some boots or some swords and some crazy stuff, you just simply gotta replace the mesh for your item. You know, and I created a nice item editor for you guys that's built into the plugin window, which we'll get into again later on. So let's left click, which is set up in our bag. 
to pick up items. If you guys remember, we'll equip, pick up all these things. Uh, oh, we can't pick this up, and it right here says our bag is full. So that means we have 71 at a 75 weight. That means this thing is too um, heavy for us. No problem. So if we go into the inventory, we can hover over these items and we'll get displayed some pretty decent information, right? Our tooltips will resize nicely depending on the text that is displayed to us. And we can go ahead and read off some of this text. Uh, before we do, before I go into the, you know, the technical details, I'm just going to basically show you guys some of the functionality and then we can move on to how everything works. So basic functionality is we can left click and mind you, all these keys can be rebound to anything you want. So this can be, if I hold G and drag, it'll for, do the same purpose. But right now I just have it set to hold left click. So we hold left click and we drag, right? And then it'll be put into its correct slot. We can also left click drag onto another item and they'll just swap positions, right? No errors, no craziness, no errors, nothing going wrong, right? So we're all good to go. Um, now there's also an optional thing that you like to do, and these are all equip slots. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's actually little icons in the back here. Um, this one's a little head icon. This one's a neck. This one's uh, cool little things. I don't know if you can see. It might be too dark, but this, these are your equip slots. Um, if you didn't <laughs> get it from the start here, so what we can do is if we want to equip an item, we can simply right click on it, and it'll auto equip it, and you'll see this thing has a required class of sorcerer and we just so happen to be a sorcerer, so we can equip it, right? And you'll see that our stats automatically go up because this item has 21 energy, and it was added to our one that we already had. And if we don't want to right-click to auto-equip it, and the key can be around, as always, um, obviously we can't equip that because we're not a barbarian. But we can, however, uh, just drag it, drag it into its slot, right? So we can either right-click or drag. Now cool little feature. This necklace is a glistening choker. This is a rusted necklace. If we drag it and drop it onto that slot, you'll see that our attributes will change, and the glistening choker is now unequipped, and this item is equipped. Like I said, two different methods. You got to drag and drop, or you can right click. So if there's something there, it'll take those attributes away, unequip it, and equip what item that we needed. So we did the drag and drop first time, so let's do the right click this time. Right click, unequip that one, rest the necklace down here, glistening jokers up here. Alright, so let's go ahead and drop our sword here. So what we can do, and the only method that we have that I have built into the system, because like I said, I wanted to do it purely uh, Diablo style, right? So what you can do is drag it, drop it into the scene window here, right? If my camera is off, <laughs> my camera is hooked up to left mouse button also, so there's a little complication air there but yeah we just simply drag it into the scene and you'll see the little icon on there and plop it's been dragged into the scene and it's now has all of its physics and all that working again so we can drop all these items back into the scene and i want to pick this item up specifically just so i can show you guys um the equipping actually i don't know if i can actually do that i want to show you guys basically <laughs> the same thing for the how those uh, actually change. I wanted you to be able to see that the, you know, different weapon types obviously change with that. But here we have Doom Hammer. This one's Hammer of Death. If we equip the that one, Hammer of Death up here, Doom Hammer up here, uh, attributes change. Um, now this slot right here is just an extra resource slot. If you want to slave save one <laughs> slave, you want to save one spot of your inventory, you could put a resource potion there, and you just free up you know a free slot. Um, now for consumables. Equip or consumables, equipables, and usables, they have their own separate events, right? So if we equip an item, this knows it's an equipable item, so it's going to equip it. This knows it's a consumable, so if we right click it, look at it, adds five bonus vitality. So our vitality is 251. It should be 256 when we right click on this. Bam, we've added it, weight has been changed you know, make up for us using that potion, and the vitality has been changed. And this right here says plug in consumable item has been used, right? So like I said, everything that I've possibly can expose to you guys, I've made 
public in the item script so that way you can guys can tie custom events to things that you can do so, right so if i want to drink this potion right i can tie audio to that like a drinking sound or if i want my guy to say some witty comment or something right you guys can have that option now this right here is just a simple item right so it's just a usable so if i were to use this item maybe i can teach myself how to craft this certain weapon right so if i right click on it it'll just say plug in usable item used i have no logic attached to that in the apply blocks so it does nothing for me same thing for this quest item if we right click on it it'll say quest item used nothing no logic for it for me for this game so it does nothing um, same thing for the boots here we have a boot equip that boot gives us less stats swaps out the slot so obviously we can also drag this into slots that it it's not prepared and meant for and it will do nothing right so it on these automatically know what slots they need to go to um, and we could drop this onto itself right click on it and you'll see that no errors it doesn't cause any issues um, so yeah uh, that's basically the whole drag and drop system like i said if we want to clear some space up we can just drag all these into the world they get all their physics and collider components back um, and oh yeah this was the render camera that i was telling you guys about that's uh, a child of the player here so here let me pick up one of our axes again so you can actually see that so you can see here, it's showing our axe and our player here. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole little drag and drop inventory system, uh, along with the showcasing the attributes, weight, gold, level, class, and name. So let's go in and check out our vendor. And then we're gonna check out the loading or the saving, the main menu, which has the load button so we can load our game back up. So we're gonna go to the vendor. Now the vendor, this is his name, this is his trade, right? So it can be trader, blacksmith, traveler, uh, three-legged man thing, right? Whatever you guys want. Um, and basically you guys can tie all that information into there. He also can have a gold pool or a currency pool, right? So he right now has 648 gold. If I sell him an item, right? Let's say I sell him this 323 gold item he is going to lose that money and i'm going to gain that money so let's see that in action sold i now have 823 yes now minus that money all right so i can sell all my items oh okay so basically what i have is my quest item here um, is not set up to be sold right it's a it's a bool that you can check inside of the item itself um, so this can't be sold it can only be dropped so that's that and obviously we can't sell him these items because he has no more money to give us so now we're screwed <laughs> so now we need to buy some things back from him right so he has his own item set up now what i'm going to do is in a later uh, update i'm going to include a buyback tab right so it'll be a, a nice little tab up here that you guys can click and you guys can buy back the items that you sold to him with some added interest of course that you guys can tweak uh, but basically right now there is no buyback tag if you if you sell something to him you lose it just what we have set up right now like i said further update i'll go ahead and add that in there for you guys uh, but i just wanted to get something out the door for you um oh yeah also i forgot to tell you guys i added a nice little feature for the tooltip um you'll see the tooltip how it's centered correctly so that way if i'm at the corner of my screen here my tooltip doesn't go flying off in the wrong direction now see how it's anchored at the bottom right so that my mouse is at the bottom right corner of it if we come over here the tooltip is now anchored to the top left because we're i basically divided the screen up into four sections technically yeah four sections so this is upper left bottom left upper right bottom right so that way we're up at, we're at the top left portion right we haven't reached that bottom so the tooltip knows to be at the top the anchor needs to be at the top left for the tooltip. So that's a nice little system that I made for you guys. So that way you can keep your tooltips all uh, set up nice and nothing goes flying off the screen. Um, but yeah, back to, the, <laughs> back to the system here. So we can, if we want to sell stuff to him, I forgot to tell you guys, we just simply right click on an item. Um, it seemed like the simplest way to do it. Dragging and dropping, I think, takes too much time. 
Um, so I just kind of wanted just to do it something simple. So you, all you do is just right click on an item and it, it'll sell it. Um, no confirmation menu yet. Like I said, I could add it in another update if you guys need it. Um, but basically, yeah, so you can right click on an item to buy it. So you'll see our gold will go down, his gold will go up. So we bought that, bought that, bought that. Good, right? So all these items are randomly generated when we interacted with him. And like I'll go into that whole system when we get into the actual vendor video. But basically you can specify items that he'll randomly generate and you can buy those items. But these items here, they'll never go away because they're set to infinite. And this is something you can also set in the item script. So these items will never go away. They're here forever, right? So let's go and just sell this back to him because we do not want them. Now, mind you, when the trader window is open or the vendor window is opened and the inventory window is open, right click does not equip things. It sells things or whatever key that you have it bound to in the inspector, right? It'll only sell things. If we walk away, which is a, a sub feature that I made for you guys, um, if we walk away and just close his interaction, or if we just press escape and close both, um, and also if you interact with them, it'll automatically open up your inventory. But yeah, so if this is opened, right click sells things, but we can still drag and drop and equip them. But always keep that in mind. Right click sells when this is opened, okay? But yeah, back to this. So obviously, you know, we want to be able to buy these items now. When we're buying single items, it's not an issue to, to right click on them. But let's say, let's just sell this back to these guys. Um, let's, let's say that we want to buy items in quantity, like these, like these types of items over here, right? What we can do is we can add a key modifier. So basically, I bound it to shift. You can change it if you'd like, it's all in the inspector. So shift, if I hold shift, I'm holding shift and left click, it'll bring up my bulk purchase menu. And there's a little input field that you can click right here. And my screen is pretty dark, but there is a, there's a little box indicator that lets you know you can click inside of it. And what it'll do is it'll get the item that we're wanting to buy, which, and it'll populate that here, mana potion, and we could type in a number. So let's say I wanna buy six mana potions, All right? I submit that, his gold will go up, my gold will go down, depending on the price of mana potions, and it'll now give me six mana potions, and my weight will also go up. Same thing for lesser health potions. Buy six of those. Actually, we'll just buy two, because we're going on a pretty short adventure. So we'll just buy two of those, right? So yeah, that's pretty much the system here. Now, um, I'm sure you're asking, why aren't these items stacking? It was a basic design decision to be honest um like i said i'm going off of diablo diablo doesn't have stackable um items if i'm not mistaken except for keys keys are stackable um, but potions and things like that uh, don't stack so that's a system that i went off of um, like i said future update i'll go ahead and add that stuff in there super easy i just wanted to push something out for you guys to have now right so uh that's basically the trader we'll go into the script later on um i believe i pressed space <laughs> to load the other scene so basically well we might as well just go into that now so basically i pressed space and that allowed me to load my next scene right so we had our loading window there uh, loading indicator was all full and then we loaded our new scene with our button down there so you'll see here that all of our items have persisted we have our equips that still persist, our all of our attributes still persist, our weight persists, and our gold persists, right? And the load safe system is a custom solution, that I'm, and it's going to take it probably its own video to go over for you guys, because we're already at about 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, you'll see that obviously the trader's over there, and all of our items are over here now. So um, just to show you guys the basic load save part of it, we're going to switch back to our other scene and I just have it set to press space, so we'll switch us back here. So if we save, so we have all of our items, right? We save, okay, spam save. Go back to the main menu. Load game. Come back to the world, add our start position, 
all of our items, our weight, our gold, our attributes, our level, our name, everything's good to go still. So that right there is proof that we do have persistent loading and saving. We have zero errors, all console messages that could obviously be, be disabled by you guys for the items. Um, just letting you know uh, simple information. But no errors, no nothing, no data loss, none at all. So the system does work. It is persistent through all your scenes. It's a very simple system uh, that I'll go ahead and go over to you guys probably in the next video. Yeah, because I want to keep these pretty pretty short. So like I said, next video, we're actually going to get into the canvas this time. I know I lied. <laughs> we're going to get into the canvas, uh, and then we're going to be taking a look at the how to set up your inventory, how to set up the slots, the rows, the information, the tooltips, and the vendor, and the load save. So that will probably be like a maybe a 30-minute video. Try to do it as quick as possible. So see you guys in that video. Bye-bye.